So all the drawings today are uh, having to do with lines of symmetry and really trying to get those shapes uh, to be symmetrical. Um, if we uh, look at the assignment sheet, uh, you'll have a handout. So depending on uh, whether you printed it out already small or whether you got the larger sheet that's enlarged, it doesn't matter. Just you know, just pretty much center the, the six. The other four drawings, so it's a lot of drawings, but they're all pretty uh, straightforward and loose. Now, one thing I'll change on the one called uh, ellipsis, round shapes, I'm going to make you do at least three sheets of these. Just fill up three sheets, and then I I'll ask you to um, uh, circle your best shapes, your best shallow ellipse and your best fat ellipse. Okay? And... Um, so that way you don't just fill up one, say, okay, I'm done. Uh, I'll change that, I'll send a little email. Uh, and then the other ones are the cone and, and cylinder, and we get into shading a little bit with those. Um, and, um, this is pretty much the same as the beginning, which was the cart, right? So you can um, take trace of vellum and use it as a base. You also don't have to trace them, I and if you want to do it freehand, that's fine too. Um, but the exercise is to determine where the centers are uh, in these blocks. And of course the centers are, you know, if you split the lines, right? Uh, since we're not doing perspective, these are all uh, iso pretty much isometric or axonometric. So just decide where your, uh, your line is and that will become the axis for your carton. Okay. Uh, one thing that you can do is, oops. So again, using parallels, uh, draw your cartons. If you get too bored with these cartons, you can you know, change the shape a little bit, maybe make them a little longer, a little shorter. Uh, you know, maybe this one we have, so let's say maybe we do it like that. Okay. Move your paper as needed. And um, I'll, I'll keep post posting reminders about you know how to use how to use your wrist, your shoulder, your elbow, how not to rest your elbow on the desk because that will force your wrist to make uh, round motions rather than straight. sort of mental exercise too, like, right, what happens there? Well, first of all, of course, this is what happens right here, you get this connection. And, you know, it can be simple enough, so you don't go crazy with this, but... 
think the assignment calls for marker or, or for pen. Um, it's okay if you want to do it with a pen. You can also um, just use again pencil or colored pencil, uh, and, it, and it refers to the so-called line three, which was the thickness of the line. Uh, it's in. It's based on that first video that I forget if I showed it, but it's. Um, I showed the pages definitely from it from Natata that has those tricks about how to determine the thickness of a line. Um, uh, well, actually, this is separate than I thought because, after all, it's really intersecting in the bottom part, so there is no... A tougher one would be if, I, if they were both straight and the two roofs were intersecting, but because it's just the blocks. So, this is like, you know, playing outside the box a little bit. example in I learn it this basically shows the six possible ways that you can see this card right because you have six uh, because it's kind of like a cube okay on the uh, number nine the lines of symmetry for the uh, ellipses once again line up your arm with your you know can't show it to you because I don't have enough room here but keep everything straight pencil your hand your wrist your forearm and your, even your upper arm and just draw those ellipses. What you can do is also draw the axis first. And just do this, um, again, it's kind of searching line first so that when you, because you know, when I start like this, I know I'm off, right? I'm off to the right side, so I can adjust, and when I think it looks good, I just go for it. Um, then in some of them, just, just highlight, you know, the axis, okay? What you can do, too, is highlight one of the halves to see how are you doing? You know, this is not so good, right? It's a little bit off. Um, just do a bunch, okay? So again, let's do three sheets. Um, and then circle your best one. Okay, your best uh, shallow one, very flat. And your best uh, squat one as far as you can go without making it a circle. Um, and that's harder to do. Okay. So best, uh, I don't know, squat, square, squarish. Um, and best uh, uh, shallow. On the other two, one is with uh, cylinders, and the other is cones, rather, cones and cylinders, whatever. <laughs> um, okay, uh, and in these, I think we're calling for uh, doing a little bit of shading. Um, and let's... For right now, let's just go with shading that is truly just marks, okay? Just like strokes, rather than trying to do that, okay? Rather than trying to do the, uh, you know, the chiaroscuro thing as if you were doing a painting, right? We talked about not doing this, um, not doing this, but rather doing this. Um, well, there's a link in I learn at some point in one of these three or four exercises to ID sketching. Um, it's not a video, it's actually just a series of uh, uh, frames, but it's very good. So this, this is pretty much based on that. Um, with shading, you need to determine what the light is coming from. 
so the light direction and I don't know I want to say that maybe from the upper left hand corner it's kind of like our, the way traditionally we think about lighting but maybe that's because I'm right handed I don't know <laughs> but typically from the top right because of the sun um, and uh, first of course make sure you get your shapes um, right if you want, you can start making your uh, ellipses a little bit different uh, from top to bottom. In general, the, uh, the bottom one is going to be a little bit bigger, right? So that, that implies that we're looking at it in perspective, just slightly, but, right? As opposed to being the same. Um, don't do it too much, because otherwise it just looks weird. They, they stop looking like objects and they start looking like, I don't know, buildings. And, um, and I'm going to skip to a top view of this hypothetical cylinder to talk about um, where you would put your shadows. Okay? Again, this is from that, um, from that tutorial on ID sketching. Um, so even though when we say, you know, the light is coming from here, we don't really know where exactly it's coming. Is it coming from here? Is it coming from here? Um, we're just going to say that more or less it's coming from the side. Um, and even though you would think, well, it is true that if it's coming from the side, this entire area is equally in the shadow, right? But what we'll do is we'll just pick a point that is uh, midway in this quadrant right here, in the opposite quadrant. And that would be, we could call it 4 o'clock or 4.30. Okay, so if you look at the, uh, at the actual, you know, oblique view, that would be somewhere here. Okay, if I split that into half. And that would be the, the darkest area. Okay, what we're calling the core shadow. Um, that's your reference point because everything else from there becomes a little lighter all the way to the opposite point which is here which would be your highlight which you want to leave uh, without any color right the paper becomes your highlight uh, then moving further along it starts it does get a little shadow here and you might say well there can't be any shadow there right because that's that's the light it's coming from here well you know, break the rule or, or go against your own sort of logic and say, no, I'm going to put a little shadow to give it a little more body, right, a little more volume. And the opposite happens on the other side. There is a little bit of highlight here, which is reflected light, which is light that might be coming from a desk or from maybe the wall or from another object. Um, okay, so that's to break that up further and just give a name to all these parts, um, you have the core shadow, right, opposite the light. Uh, next to it you have, I'm showing already reflected light, but you have a rather here shadow that's a little bit lighter and then further lighter and that's your reflected light on this side, highlight on the left, a little shadow on the left further, um, and then this is the cast shadow. And you notice how the cast shadow is also kind of faded away. So in this drawing, I'm just using straight, uh, straight strokes and I'm just putting them further apart if I want to make it lighter. Um, where does it stop and where does it end each shade? Or, or how do you make that, right? Because you're not doing this. Um, one reason not to do this is that also that when we get into markers, it's really hard to do this well with markers and it's actually more fun to show the strokes with markers, okay? Because um, it, it's not trying to be a painting, right? Um, later on, when you get to objects that are a little more complicated, if you, particularly if you don't have the object, you just, you just make it up and you say, uh, let's see, let, let me just make something up. Uh, maybe, I don't know what this is, but... Uh, so let's say the light is there, and let's say you need to determine where the shadow, you know, what, 
light is here and what shadow is here, well, how do you know? Um, you just you just kind of make it up, you know, so I can just say, well, I know it slopes down here, so maybe I'll just do this, and I'll just fill that up. So immediately, even though I don't know, because I don't have any lights, I don't have any object, uh, that's a decision you make. It's a little bit like, you know, the Apple logo now, because it's 3D. You know, they have the line going like there, through, and then they show the highlight or the shadow, I forget which, but it's kind of the same concept. So you, you sort of define your shadows and you just go for them. Um, let's go back now. Uh, let's see, if you're gonna put, I don't know if the assignment calls for, sh for cast shadows, but if it does, uh, the way to do them is simply to project down your lines from your object, more or less in the, in the same direction as your light, and then you have your verticals, and then from those verticals um, on the ground also project lines which would be again in this hypothetical direction right because if I do them like this it'll be different so in this case I'm going at about you know 30 degrees and so where they meet okay and notice I'm not doing perspective now I'm just doing everything parallel um, where they meet, that's kind of the end of your, uh, it's a little bit odd because this is a little bit off, so, but anyway, more or less, that's, that would be the top of my shadow, okay? So the same is true for a sphere, of course, and also, I don't have a cube, but I'll do a quick one. Okay, so the light is coming from there. Uh, So from the back corner, this way, this way, this way. And then all you do is just connect all those intersections. Sorry, I bumped into the cylinder there. Um, okay. All right. I don't want to spend too much time. I'll just quickly go through these other sketches. Um, we're not doing this, this sphere yet, but uh, if you do one, there's some of the same principles. You, you establish where the light is coming from. Uh, you do an opposite shadow, which is your, your core, and you leave a little bit of, again, reflected light just to separate the shape from the cast shadow. Because if we made it probably the way it's true, this would be too dark, right? And then the, the shape of the shadow, this core shadow, is a little bit like a banana shape, they call it. Um, at the opposite end, where you have a highlight, well, guess what? How do I draw a highlight? I can't, right? Because if I draw something, it's going to be darker than the true highlight. But nevertheless, we just pretend and we just do something to give a hint of a highlight. This drawing just shows contour lines, a little bit like a globe with, uh, with its uh, uh, parallels. And um, uh, these are parallels and meridians just to give it a little more volume. So you can start doing that, using contours to define the object, you know, because again, a ball, a sphere in perspective or an axonometric is gonna always be a circle. So the question is, where is, you know, where is everything? If, if the North Pole is here, then the South Pole is gonna be at the opposite side. So how do you show that, right? So you start, Start defining that this way. Yeah, this is just a simple diagram showing that normally, you know, with lighting, well, this is particularly referring to cinema, you know, you have a backlight to make somebody stand out and you have uh, a, main, a key light, you know, with the main lighting and then you have a fill light under and I use shading there and eh, it, it looks pretty good. I would say for now, don't worry about it too much. I'm just trying to like make it again like a picture. Again with the uh, uh, strokes. So. Alright. So my core would be there. So that's my center. So 
uh, I pick a band and I just go. And keep your strokes always at the same angle. So, because it's amazing how, even though they're going this way, we think they're round, right? We think they're making a kind of a round shape. it's actually best to uh, do cross a little bit like that rather than trying to fill in because then it gets a little muddy. 